Hi guys, for this week's video, I wanted to share with you the neck mod that I did on SALT. Um, I switched sofa head on an Ipo House SID body. He is a hybrid doll and one that took me some effort to put together, so I thought I'll share a bit more on the doll, why I wanted this hybrid, the process of me doing his neck modifications, and also what I learned along the way. So if you're interested in hybrid dolls and modifications, or are just curious to see the process or learn more about salt, uh, please keep watching and let's get into it. So the first part would be on the doll, I guess the concept of the doll and why this particular hybrid. So the first reason is a pretty shallow one. I wanted to have a doll that resembles one Ho from One Star X, um, or I mean now he's a solo artist, but he used to be from One Star X. So I really like One Ho, and yeah, I really wanted a doll that reminded me of him. So like a cute face with lush lips and also a really buff body. So yeah. But I mean, okay, if we dig deeper into the doll itself, I also really wanted the Switch Sohua scalp because of his nose and his lips. So I did mention the large lips, uh, and his nose in particular I actually also really really like. Yeah, so I mean, Switch has quite a lot of scalps that look somewhat similar. Like you can tell that there's a family of resemblance there. Uh, but I think Sohua's nose is one of the more... Like, there's a few that kind of look similar, but Sohua's one was really the one that I like. So, that was why I wanted Sohua for the head. And I could just get uh, Sohua with the normal Switch Attractive 65 body, but um, I didn't really want to do that because then I would just have another doll that's kind of the same shape and same size as the ones that I already have. So, I have a Vox SD17 body for... Sion, my Miki doll Miho, and I also have um, a couple of Switch boys on Switch Attractive 65 bodies, which is, you know, generally similar in size to the SD17. So I didn't want to just have like a Sohua who's on a body that was like quite similar. So I wanted a buff body for the Sohua, and I was considering quite a few companies. I know. Um, like for example, Granado was out because although I like how the body looks and it's quite buff, um, I did own a Granado Nuevo 60, 68, I think, 68 body once and I wasn't a fan of it back then because I didn't really like how the elbow joints were. Um, and I think just in general the joints, but specifically the elbow one always, uh, always, um, always gave my fingers pinches, so I wasn't really a fan of that. And um, yeah, which was a pity because I, I know for a fact that the next would work because the next size wasn't too big. Anyway, after searching through searching through a lot of different bodies, I, I found Ipo House's body to be the best aesthetics-wise and also in terms of like joint design, just because was, that was something I was particular about. However, I did have two things that I wasn't very sure about. One was the neck size, whether the head and the body can fit together without modification. And uh, spoiler alert, it, it required modification. And the second thing that I was not sure about was whether the resin would match, which is a typical issue that you have when you're trying to hybridize dolls. So... Um, I did a lot of research and I was trying to find really just pictures of Switch and Ipo house together, trying to find whether the, either the neck or the resin would match. Uh, so in the end, I think most of the comparison pictures I found were actually of Ipo next to Vox instead of next to Switch, because for some reason there wasn't there just wasn't a lot of pictures of Ipo next to Switch. So I did the next best thing I could, which was to find it next to Vox, because I do have a Vox body and I do have Switch. But 
uh, in my own house. So, um, yeah, I just took the pictures of Ipo next to Vogue's and extrapolated how Switch would compare to Ipo from there. So, if that sounds complicated, that's because it was. <laughs> and it was just the best that I could find uh, from the internet. So, after all this internet detective work, it still wasn't conclusive. Um, it did seem like the resin match for normal skin and also potentially white skin or rosy white would not be too far off. Um, but the neck part was a big question mark because like nobody really bothered to put like any Vogue's or switch heads on Ipo House. So that was like, I had no clue what was going to happen for that. And then at some point after doing so many searching and like I think I tried to ask on Den of Angels for any sort of photo reference, I don't think I got any reply. Um, but yeah, at some point I decided to like just do it myself. Uh, I was like, heck it, I'm just gonna try <laughs> to get this hybrid together because I really wanted this doll. So I decided to buy the parts and hope for the best. So I think this was around end of 2019. Uh, I think the concept was probably like around 20 mid or early 2019. I can't really remember. But yeah, when when I decided that I was just gonna buy the doll or like try and find the doll parts that I wanted to buy, I think as luck would have it, I did manage to find the parts. So the lucky thing was actually Sohua wasn't available um, on Switch's online store at that point in time. And um, I think at that point when I was searching, he wasn't on the second-hand market either. Or when I did find him, he was like already sold. So what was really lucky was that like around the end of 2019, there was a Dok and Switch collaboration, which had Sohua. And around that point in time, I also found myself going to Korea uh, for a concert. So because of that, um, the concert was kind of unexpected. So I, uh, it's a Pepper Tones concert if anyone's interested. But anyway, I happened to be going for a concert because I happened to be able to get tickets. I wasn't really expecting it. So I was going to go to Korea. So I made arrangement to go to um, Platina Switch showroom. And... I think because of the dope collab, they did have extra Sohua heads around. So I did manage to buy a Sohua head in Platina itself, which was really, really great. Um, I did, I think at that point, want a rosy white Sohua instead of like normal skin, or I think they call it powder beige right now. Um, yeah, so I did want it in a paler colour, just hopefully because it would match better to the Ipo house body, but there was only normal skin or powder beige, uh, whatever it's called right now. And um, that was the only option, so I just got it because I wasn't too... Like, I knew that it would, it would probably still work. Yeah, so I bought the Sohua head at the end of 2019 in Korea. And then uh, after that, um, I also bought the Ipo house body. So usually at the end of the year, Ipo has a end of year sales. And I bought a full um, SID Eden to get the SID body. So I really just wanted the body, but it was because of the discount, it made more sense. I think they don't sell the body by itself also, but it made more sense to just get a full doll to get a discount. So I got the SID body because it seemed like the best bet for working out um, with the Sohua head proportion wise. And also because I I found through my decluttering that I didn't really like dolls that were bigger than 65cm. I did sell both of my 68cm boys or 68cm bodies in the end. So yeah, like bigger dolls are just not really my thing. Anyway, so at the end of 2019, uh, the Switch Soha head came back with me via plane. <laughs> So yeah, it took a plane with me from Korea back to Singapore. And then I ordered the Ipo house body, which I had to wait for it to be made and to ship to me. So um, the body only arrived around May 2020. 
mostly because you know that was when COVID happened and uh, shipments were just delayed so he spent actually I think a whole month in the airport where I was just watching the tracking but when he did get to me I put my switch so hard who has been patiently waiting onto the body and yeah you can definitely tell he needs a neck modification to fit <laughs> I think like, when I was showing this to my doll friends, they were like, he looks like the Loch Ness Monster. So, I think I was a bit biased at that point in time, because I was just excited to finally get the two parts together, like the head and the body. And I think I didn't really realise how ridiculously long the neck was at this point in time. Um, I do realise now in hindsight that, yeah, the neck was like really long. But at the point I was like, yeah, it kind of works. <laughs> so that was that was quite funny. But like my friends did have a did give me a reality check and they were like, yeah, I think you need to mod the neck to be shorter because he looks a bit weird right now. And then um yeah, so off the bat the neck fit was not a great I uh, not a great fit. And then uh the good thing was resin colour wise, he was actually pretty close. So the switch powder beach and the Ipo house normal skin was pretty close in colour especially in person um, although I did find that in camera it tends to appear that the switch head is slightly yellower than the body but I think in real life it's pretty close and it's nothing that you can um, sort of hide with a face up so I wasn't too concerned about that yeah so that was the first part, getting the doll. So now we move on into the second part, which is the neck modification. So just some background for information. I think I haven't actually done a lot of doll modifications. Um, this is probably like the third or fourth time that I'm doing some sort of modification on dolls. So whatever I've done earlier was like on a smaller scale. One was a nose mod um, to reshape the nose to be a bit more rounded on a Mickey doll cynical view. And then one was an, one was an eye-opening mod on my Unowa faceplate. And then I almost forgot about this, but I did um, modify a Blythe head at some point in time to like... I mean, it was my first time modifying a Blythe, so it also wasn't that great <laughs> like it didn't go badly but you know I don't have that many um, prior experience with modification so needless to say I was actually being very cautious and very careful in doing this ne neck modification because I didn't really want to screw anything up like yeah the doll was so expensive the doll and the body were both like, the body especially was expensive and I didn't really want to screw it up so I'll share with you what I did for the neck modification, but do bear in mind that what I did was I basically improvised along the way. And um, so what I'm going to tell you is like what I experienced, but I'm, I don't know, I, I suspect that there's better ways of doing this that I'm just not aware of because I'm not a very experienced mod model. So um, yeah, let's move into it. So I think the first thing that I noticed with um, Sohua, or like Salt, <laughs> I'm just going to call him Salt instead of calling the scalp name. Um, so the first thing I noticed was that Salt's head uh, doesn't really sit very well on the body. So it's kind of just like sitting or like perching on the neck of the body. So there was space between the head itself and the neck of the body. So I thought the first thing I needed to do was to mod the neck hole of the head. Um, both by shortening like the extra resin around the back of the neck uh, to bring the body closer to the head and also to widen the whole um, neck hole on the head itself so that it could accommodate the thicker neck that the body had. Generally what I did was that I would trace with a pencil or watercolour pencil how much I think I would need to sand and then I would sand with a wet piece of sandpaper so I think that's called wet sanding so I just sanded with a piece of wet sandpaper until I got to the point that I needed to 
I did do a lot of checks along the way and I also had like a wet cloth to wipe away any excess uh, resin. So, um, yeah, one thing to mention now, I think, is that I just used sandpaper for the whole modification. So, it is a very slow method, um, but I think since it's very slow, I would notice if something was wrong before any irreversible damage was done. So that was my failsafe in a way. But the downside of it was that using only sanding took me really, really long. <laughs> but I mean, I didn't do any damage in the end. So yeah, it, I mean, it's a trade-off and I did find it worth it at the end. So as I was saying, I didn't want to cut and I just kept sanding and sanding. And I also did uh, keep putting the head back onto the body to try it on to see like what are the points of contact that the head is making with the neck. And then um, because that point of contact would be what is preventing the neck, the head from sitting closer to the neck, I would send those points of contact to bring the head closer to the body. So that would like reduce the length of the neck, if that makes sense. So at this early point, I was only modifying the head. And I was trying to avoid needing to touch or send the body in any way if I could. But I think once I did as much as I could for the head to really like bring the whole um, neck area of the head down to the neck of the body as much as I could to reduce the length and everything and trying to widen the girth of the neck hole of the head so that it can fit the thicker neck. Once I did as much as I could, I realized that the neck was still too thick because even though the length was better um, and he didn't look like a lot mess anymore, um, there was still like, you know, you can still see that the neck was like much thicker than the area behind the back of his ears. So I think this was also when I made this ASMR video where I talk a bit about Salt's um, neck mod and how the neck was basically kind of protruding out under the head. So I'm going to insert a bit of it here. It's going to be a bit weird <laughs> because it's a ASMR video so I was whispering but let, let's, let me just put it in first. I'm more than salty to fit on this body. But as you can see, some parts of the neck Yeah, so after that, um, after that it took me a while, but I did start sanding the neck of the body. Um, yeah, because I realized I needed to do it to really make the door work together better. So I don't really have a lot to say about this. It was a lot of sanding and checking to see if it was okay. Um, and also turning the head uh, to the left and to the right to see whether the size of the neck worked with the head in like positions other than like salt facing directly forward so I just kept sending like a bit by a bit and then like seeing how it looked so eventually I did manage to finish sending him to fit and these are the end results I think there is probably still like more that I could do to make it look even better but it was good enough for me and Anyway, he will be wearing a wig most of the time, so I didn't really like let... Like, I figured this was good enough, and I've spent enough time on it. So I smoothened the whole thing out um, with an even finer sandpaper than whatever I was using earlier. And I 
finally finish Salt Snake Mod at like the end of 2020 or like the start of um, 2021. Uh, I think I did have to go back in a few times to use the fine sandpaper to really smoothen everything out because I found scratches, like, like very faint scratches from like the earlier course of sandpaper that I was sending with. And I was like, oh yeah, I need to smoothen it out a bit more. So yeah, it took a while, but like at the start of 2021, I've definitely finished the mod. So yeah, that was what I learned. And also I think... I didn't know what grid of sandpaper I was using, but I went back to check afterwards and I think for most of the modification I was using 250, or at least that's what it says on the back of my sandpaper. And for finishing him up, I used a thousand. Like the grid was like a thousand. So I don't know if that's helpful to you. So now moving on to the last part, the third part, what I learned. So I don't think I really learned a lot about the modification itself from this like one project per se. Like I said, my plan from the start was really just to do it very slowly so that I wouldn't mess up. And it did turn out okay for me. Uh, it was really slow, but I didn't mess up. So, you know, it worked out as intended. But I think the biggest challenge I have with this way of modifying things was that because it took so long, it was really easy to get this courage. And yeah, I mean, I suppose someone more experienced might be able to do it faster, maybe with a tool like a Dremel, or even just maybe using a pen knife or some cutting tool to carve away more of the resin along the way. But I was just um, sanding everything because that was less likely to leave any marks that I couldn't get rid of. And it was just like more beginner friendly and I am I am a beginner in modification. So I think what really helped uh, during this whole process was sharing where I was at uh, with my modification and also the fears that I had uh, with salt, like, you know, my fear of messing up, my fear of doing irreparable damage to the expensive piece of plastic that I spent a lot of money on and so on. I, I think it really helped to talk about all this with my friends and uh, sharing where I was at, pictures of where I was at and also like just talking about like how I'm scared or like how I'm tired about modifying things because my fingers hurt. So I talked to both my friends who own dolls and also like just a close friend um, and it honestly helped a lot. Because they reminded me that it's okay to do things slowly. It's okay to be fearful of damaging your dolls. Yeah, it's okay to take breaks and go on months without modifying my doll. It's... Yeah, I mean, like, the doll is gonna wait for you. It's not going anywhere. So, it was really helpful to do that. And eventually, I did get the doll I want. And that I dream up around, like, mid-2019. And it is now... It is now early 2021 as I'm doing this. It's in January. And going from like the concept of the door to researching, to buying, to modifying it to where I am now, it took quite a while. So Salt as a door isn't fully completed yet either because I'm still doing his face up. Um, but the neck mod was really the biggest challenge I have uh, in this hybrid and I'm super, super proud that I finally finished it and that he is where he is now. So I'll update pictures or videos of Salt at some point. Um, maybe I, I don't think it'll be on this video, but maybe in future videos when I do finish his face up. Um, you can also check out my Instagram where I'm posting the process pictures of his face up as I'm doing it. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I will just bask in this joy of having completed this really long journey to modifying his neck to get this cute buff doll that I wanted. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take some time to be happy about this and enjoy doing his face up along the way. So, yeah, let me know if you found this story of sort, uh, how he came about, and the neck modification that I did on him interesting. And let me know if you have a similar experience. Um, 
I also welcome any suggestions that you might have on like maybe a better way to do this neck modification because although I'm not planning on doing another one anytime soon or maybe even ever, it's always good to like learn and know um, what are some of the things that could be done that could maybe make it faster or maybe make it easier to do. And yeah, it's always good to share and learn. So let me know if you have any such experiences. And I think that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.